going into uh, our January phase of the season. And, and, and just to kind of back up, uh, <laughs> I was taught to start with the end in mind and work backwards. So that's kind of how we start every year. And so we've, we've done a 12 months calendar with uh, Coach Cassidy and our staff. Uh, and we've basically gone over the whole year. Uh, everything that we want to do this year from some winter training to uh, spring practice uh, to spring recruiting to summer camps to training camp and then our season. And so we work backwards. Um, very excited to get our our players back in in class and back on campus this weekend. Had a lot of great conversations with our kids over break and excited to get back and be with them. Um, we're going into a recruiting uh, contact period, really important. We have three weeks left in this second phase of recruiting. We have about six scholarships that we are remaining for us. And it's, it's unusual because the mid-year guys, the transfer guys are able to uh, visit seven days before school starts and so we we've had some kids in and also we have um, um, some kids that we're talking to on the phone really want to focus on defensive recruits this second uh, signing period uh, and also do want to mention this you know I've had some great conversations you know uh, Colorado State had seven players that were in state that were committed before we even took the job and when I got hired, um, we really had to take a hard look at the transition, the things that we needed to do offensively and defensively um, to put ourselves on a competitive course to do what we need to do as a program. So I put those on hold. We signed Kai O'Day uh, from Cherry Creek. I really liked him. I thought he fit what we were looking for, a receiver. We needed a lot of receivers. Um, and uh, the rest of the guys we put on hold. I wanted to hire our defensive coaches. I'm going to make some comments on that first. Um, but I've talked to all of those coaches. I've talked to every one of those kids. We want them in our program. And uh, it's a really important to us that we have those, those in-state kids uh, in our program. And I've made arrangements to go see them next Tuesday. So we have ongoing conversations with all those kids that had been committed. Um, we want to get to know them. I'm going to take our coaches out to see them. And I've had really good conversations with all of them. Uh, so um, that's important to us. Really excited about our coaching staff. Um, I've, I've uh, spent a lot of time evaluating the current roster, the players that are returning. Um, and we've got an awful lot of work to do. Um, there are a lot of positions that have very little experience coming back. Um, there are other positions that are going to um, be asked to do things that are much different than they have before this season. And so we're, we're in the process of, of putting all that together. Um, we will have some transfer kids that will help that transition, but um, We'll also be having some good young high school kids that come in. Um, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, you know, Matt Mummy came with me from, from Nevada. I've worked with Matt uh, the last five years. Um, you know, we are an air raid style offense. We do some unique things with the pistol. Um, Matt's going to work with me closely uh, along with Bill Best, our line coach, and putting that whole plan together. And I, I will call the offense, but Matt's going to be super involved, as he always has been, as well as Bill. Um, we've got a lot of challenges in that regard, <laughs> to be honest with you. You know, just the way that the practice was were run, very different than, than the way that we will run practice. And we're going to need uh, far more receivers uh, in our program to be able to function and operate the way that we're used to. So we're in the process of rectifying that. The quarterbacks will, 
is going to be quite different for them. And we brought three kids in. Defensively, uh, really excited about um, uh, Freddie Banks. Freddie was uh, my secondary coach at Nevada. Um, we we run a, a a style of defense that's uh, you know was really made popular by Gus Bradley and and Freddie played in this defense at North Dakota State. Um, it's been very popular in the NFL and many college teams. Um, Freddie knows the system inside and out. Really bright, talented young coach. Left us at Nevada um, and went to Montana State last year. Uh, they were one of the top defenses in the nation in FCS. Um, and so happy to have Freddie here uh, at Colorado State. Um, they just finished playing last weekend, so he's been busy over this break. Uh, Adam Pitapel is, is also uh, going to be coming from Montana State. He's a linebacker coach, another really talented, bright, energetic young mind, and uh, really excited to have Adam. Adam has history with Freddie, which is important for me to build continuity defensively. Um, and then Buda Williams is going to coach our defensive line. And Buda is a really experienced defensive line coach, um, was on the uh, national champion uh, North Dakota State team that just won the national championship. And so Buddha's got a great history of developing defensive linemen, putting pressure on the quarterback, which is really impor important for us. We're in the process of hiring a corners coach. And uh, like I mentioned, it's, we have a real desire to play pressure defense. I mean, uh, um, we want to attack offensively. That's really important to us. That, that we attack, we have players that can attack, we have a mentality of offense that we want to press the envelope and, and push the ball down the field. Uh, we have coaches that are used to doing that, but we want to attack on defense as well. We want to pressure the quarterback. It's very important for us to hit the quarterback. Um, and I want to play bump and run coverage. And, and uh, so there, there's very specific things that need to be taught in that. Uh, spent six years in the NFL. There's the best people playing defense, play man coverage. And so we want to bring that here to Colorado State. So that's very important to us. Um, and just really excited uh, to get to work and start our eight weeks. On uh, Tuesday, we will start our eight weeks of winter training. And um, we'll start teaching our team uh, the very important details of what we think it takes to be successful. Um, and that's being having a sense of humility, having a sense of their place in history and their their responsibility uh, moving forward here at Colorado State and, and to be a part of our, our program. So that education starts on Monday and really excited to get started with that. Say, Coach, a lot of this, I know it's a new job, a new place for you, with a lot of familiar people around you. How much of the shock No, we've been through this before. It's funny, in, in the last few weeks, I've had a lot of conversations with people. And, you know, I've, I've been through this many times. I went to the University of Iowa and was part of the transition of that program. I went to the University of Wisconsin, was a part of that transition. And, uh, you know, we did it at Nevada, and we're doing it here. So um, there's a lot of experiences to lean on. There are going to be some transition um the the kids but that's part of the excitement of it as well i mean you know we we love this offense we we love teaching this offense there's a there's a process to learning it and so we get to start teaching it now and 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 uh some of the guys have some history in it um, which is going to be helpful um, but majority of the guys are going to be learning all these techniques brand new and and there's a, there's a real excitement to that, but there's also um, an experience that we've done it before. We understand where we need to start, and we need to under, we understand uh, uh, 
you know, just the, the, the time and repetition it takes to start to understand and learn these things. We're a very fundamentally based team. You know, everything that we do is about execution and fundamentals. And so you have to, you have to start that, that repetition. And, and everything that we do is built on repetition and fundamentals. And so um, we got to start that muscle memory. It's like swinging a golf club. You have to do it thousands of times before you really get it. And, and, uh, and then we'll start, we'll start that with those guys next week, Tuesday. I think it helps. It helps. I think, uh, you know, they they understand the drills. They understand uh, uh, a lot of the fundamentals. They understand a lot of the schemes. And I think it'll initially it'll be helpful. Um, it, it would be uh, we have a little bit of a kick start in, 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 in being able to come in. If we had nobody that knew, it, it would probably be a little bit more foreign, but I do think we have some ways to really get things generated quickly. And and um, you know, a lot of a lot of what we do from now until spring practice is player generated. So the players will be on their own. They'll be working in the weight room. They'll be you know throwing, catching a ball on their own. So that's really important that um, that they have some understanding of what to do. And, and uh, you know, we, we, I mean, we have a style of football that you can practice all year round and, and work on all year round. And you can't, you can't practice, you know, isolation and power all year round, but you can practice throwing and catching the football. So, so that's, a, that's something that our kids will start getting used to doing. And, um, you know, and I'm excited about it. It's a process that, that's fun to see unfold. And, you know, we love teaching it, so it's 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 um, it's it's something that we're looking forward to. You mentioned your relationship with Freddie, but other than that, what made you really want to bring him here? Freddie's a great coach, um, really intelligent, um, great demeanor, um, excellent decision maker, and he's got great uh, knowledge and experience in the system. Uh, so much of of calling defenses, calling offenses, is, is having the experience to adjust. And Freddie's done that. And, and then really attacking uh, different styles of offenses. Uh, you know, we got a great league. We have a lot of varieties of offenses in our league. And Freddie's familiar with those offenses in our league. And he also, he has a great plan to, to attack and stop those. Uh, and so that's really important. I, I, I wanted somebody uh, with energy and passion for coaching defense. Um, I just think defense is about energy. It's, it's about energy and discipline and being disruptive. You know, I, I just was, <laughs> I was just talking to our linebacker coach, you know, I was watching uh, the, the pregame interviews for the national championship and the Georgia linebackers were doing a drill where they had they had boxing gloves on and they were punching the ball punching the ball defense is violent it's it it, it, it and it takes energy to to really teach those types of skills to kids and to you know and to be demanding about it and so you got to have guys with energy you got guys that are on fire for that um, and uh, that are knowledgeable and understand and are all on the same page. You know, that was important for us that we, we had continuity in the coaches that we hired on defense. That's why I was taking my time and I wanted to, I wanted to make sure that our coordinator was in place. And then I wanted to work with our coordinator on acquiring the rest of the pieces to that puzzle on defense. I just think that's important. You know, over the years, I've been on a lot of different staffs and. And uh, that continuity, guys got to be able to work together. Guys got to be on the same page. Guys got to know the language of the defense. And offense is the same way. Uh, and so um, we have very specific things that we want to do. You know, and, and uh, uh, you know, there's a great 
great saying in investing. I mean, you don't have to be an expert at everything, but you do have to be an expert on the things that you decide to do. And that's what we want to be. We, we, these guys know this defense. They've had a lot of success in it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to get them up here to start working with our guys. When you had Freddie on staff for one year, was he a guy that you were watching, kind of had an inkling he could be a DC? Oh, yeah. And then when he left, you really paid attention to what was happening? Yeah. Yeah, Freddie, Freddie, Freddie got a chance to really, um, you know, have a lot of decision making when he was at Nevada. A um, lot of adjustments I saw him make, you know, and, and the other thing is we the way we practice is very much like a game. And so you get to see guys uh, the way they adjust, the way they play situations. And um, yeah, Freddie. <laughs> Freddie, uh, Freddie showed a lot of, of moxie and, and, and ability to adjust. And, and you know, offensively, we, tra we challenge defenses a lot. And we challenge our, our own defense. And, and to see the adjustments that he was able to make and the way that he coached on a daily basis, it just helps. You know, it's just, I can't, I, we really put a lot of weight on knowing people and knowing before we bring them into our program. And, and I just think uh, it just eliminates a lot of the gray area. Um, I know the kind of person he is. I know how he coaches. And I know his knowledge and understanding on what he can do. And so that really, that really is a comfort to me. No, it's really important, you know, and, and you know, I, I, I think, you know, a lot of the transitions that I've made, I'm very slow to be judgmental about things. I think that comes from experience. I, I think it's just really important to listen and really important to, um, to hear those stories. Um, and I like verbal stories the best. I mean, I... I mean, if we have a conversation, you tell me a story about when you were at CSU and you watched this game, or and that means more to me than what I read in a history book. And so I, I've been having those conversations, uh, you know, over the last month. I can't believe it's been a month already. Um, but but no, I'm I'm very anxious to hear the stories and the personal stories. And I mentioned before, I spent I spent over an hour with with Sonny Lubick, and I just loved. The conversations that he told, and and uh, talked to several coaches that have played here, talked to several players that played here, and um, you know, those are probably the stories that mean the most to me. The guys that have played here, the guys that have fought and bled on that field, and sacrificed. You know, those are the those are the stories that are most meaningful to me, and and so um, no, I've been I'm I'm really excited. We're gonna do a. A, a, a meet and greet with former players and just have them get to know our staff and and uh, you know we want to welcome those guys and have them to be active participants and in, in knowing our players I, I really think uh, it's important for our players to hear those stories uh, they need to know uh, how much it means to our former players to have played here and how proud they are of Colorado State and and we take that responsibility very, very seriously. You know, we we talk about making the jersey better than than when you you got it. And so, you know, these current players uh, have to have an appreciation for the players that have played before them. And and this is their time to to <laughs> add to the great tradition and history of Colorado State. You know, I was familiar with him, but probably I learned a lot when I talked to him. You know, and, and it's so funny, you know, I, I say it's a small world, but, and it gets smaller as you get older, but, you know, we sat there and talked, and we probably talked about two dozen coaches that we both know and we've crossed paths with. And, and so, um, no, it's just great to hear his, his perspective. Um, you know, I, I, I spent seven years at Oklahoma, and with Bob Stoops and 
and Barry Switzer's house was two blocks from the stadium. And so Barry used to come by and, you know, the, the facilities named after him and all that. I mean, he used to, with his golden retriever, his dog used to run through the building. I mean, I mean, and, and he was welcome. And, 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 and that's the way we want Coach Lubick to be. I mean, this is, I mean, this is, this is his program. He, he spent a lot of years here, and, and uh, I just have always been that way. I, I love, I love uh, getting to know the former coaches, and I love listening and learning from them. I think it's important. I think, uh, uh, you know, to continue th those traditions and the legacy that they've left, it's important for us to, to know it. And, and uh, so we, we welcome, you know, Coach Lubick and, and all of our former players, we want to have them back. We've had a lot of conversations about reconnecting with them, and and uh, but it's but it's important. It's important for us to to hear and and be familiar with those with our history. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I I, I got an interview. Uh, uh, reporter called me from Omaha, and they were asking me about Zach Taylor. And Zach Taylor was our quarterback when we were at Nebraska. And it, it's it's really interesting the the similarities between Carson Strong and Zach Taylor. Um, you know, Zach has now become the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, and he may be the coach of the year, um, which is awesome. Um, but Zach got Joe Burrow and Joe Burrow, uh, I knew they were going to be successful because they had so many similar qualities. Carson is, it's a joy to coach a quarterback when he has the same mindset that you have. You know, I, I love football. Um, I, I kind of eat and sleep football. I, I want to find out all the adjustments I can. I'm, I'm watching Peyton Manning, you know, travels, you know, whenever, you know, I mean, I mean, I just don't, I can't get enough of it. And that's the way Carson is. You know, we look for three things in a quarterback, intelligence, accuracy, and passion. And Carson checks all those boxes. He's six, four and some change. He's got a classic pocket release. Um, he played every game last year injured, which is, you know, I told him a story about about Dan Marino in the preseason. I really didn't know how much of an impact it was going to have on him because um, I talked about playing against Dan Marino when I coached with the Colts and how they introduced him and he had a brace on his knee that was this big and he couldn't walk. They introduced him. The players all ran out. He was the last guy they introduced, and he he hobbled out like like John Wayne, and um, he he beat us on one leg. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. A guy just got the ball out so quick. Carson did that all this year. He wasn't healthy, and so I just have so much respect for him. He's tough. Um, you know, he's. A lot of people are very high on him, think he could be a first-round draft pick, maybe even the first quarterback draft, drafted, you know, and, and he's getting ready for the Senior Bowl here, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to go down and watch that and, and uh, uh, hopefully see Trey down there too and Trey McBride, and, 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 you know, we've got a handful of players that are all in that game. So, um, but looking forward to that. And, and, and Carson's an amazing player, really passionate, really smart, but just – you know, one of those guys that, you know, you're always on the same page with him because he had that same passion for the game and and always wanting to study. And Zach Taylor was the same way. And and so, great guy to coach. I know you didn't coach him, but Trey McBride and Lena Mackey, is that something you can use as a selling point? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Trey, Trey had an amazing career and a great year last year. And that's an, that's an incredible honor uh, to – to um, uh, to win that award, so no, this you no, know, he'll be an example for for our players to come, and and um, and obviously a great player that we'll will highlight and recognize, and and um, you know, it, it, and he's he's left a legacy for others to follow, and uh, but it'll be fun to watch him this uh, 
through this off season. Now you you kind of have a season before the draft. This is a season for the for all the players that are that are have a chance to get drafted. You know, you got the Senior Bowl, you have the Combine, and those are really big milestones. And you have you have their Pro Day, and so those are big the milestones that these guys have to have to check off this next couple months. Thanks, guys.